Welcome to the Show at Night Sports Edition. And while adhering to the CDC recommendations to prevent the spread of coronavirus, I'm walking. And although walking is not a sport, it's close to running and most sports involve running. So without further ado, I bring you your host and star of the show, Josh Beckish. Yes, it's Josh. Here is Josh. Josh, 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 yeah. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, another great introduction. Thank you, Byron. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? I love your gear. Thank you. Repping, repping for the home, the home crowd. We got a lot of uh, St. Louis news and guests to talk to you tonight. I'm over it. Tonight, our, uh, our sports expert, Joe Valley, is here. We're going to talk to him about uh, you know, how things are going and uh, where they could and may go. Uh, after all that, we have former Battlehawks XFL kicker Taylor Russolino, an exclusive interview. Ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, introduce to you our show at night with me, sports expert Joe Valley. Yo, what up? One of you guys are sideways. He's, a, he's an all American boy. Okay. Now, so, welcome to the show, Joe. All righty, welcome. Just some cheap stuff. So, the playoffs are supposed to be going on right now. Nobody's really totally sure. I know, Joe, you have uh, a lot of the inside scoop as to what's going on around the NHL. So, Yo. uh, can you let us know? Have you heard anything developing? Have they? Uh, have they? Any official word? Is the season canceled? What? What? I mean, do we get a hold on to the cup for another year? What's going on? Well, even another so official word. I haven't really been following the NHL. The the cup actually belongs to the cup keeper i haven't really been paying too much attention where are we josh do you know jim montgomery jim montgomery jim montgomery he was banging one of the ice girls just goes to show you that uh questionable decisions can begin with something as simple as driving around underage kids and allowing them to drink in your private limo <laughs> i'm not a stats or numbers guy Rakuten monkeys <laughs> so what channel are you catching chinese baseball on he was, he's our god, so come back. I'm, I've been pretty bummed about uh, the XFL situation. It was very fun. There was, yes, a it buzz was. Around, there was a buzz around town. Absolutely. Real, real this ground swell around. to support the team. ka I mean, <laughs> Yeah, and it, you know, it was a thing that kind of, you know, we didn't need to support it. We knew this was going to be minor, well, not minorly, but, it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the NFL. It wasn't, you know... But, it, but what they did, they actually were able to throw a product on and they got athletes that could legitimately play it. It actually became really fun to watch. And then, you know, it's, I, mean, I, I totally understand them postponing the season or even canceling it for the time being. But the fact that they couldn't adjust to this and be able to bring it back after this year is just completely uh, – it's, it's very upsetting. And uh, – yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that this was the way that things were handled. Add it to the large pile of disappointments. Yeah, we're all disappointed. I'm sick of taking it. <laughs> yeah, and I just think the XFL, the second time around this time, was so well put together. It was just really fun. I feel like a lot of the things the XFL did would make the NFL better, from the kickoff to overtime. That's so stupid. But I was also thinking the other day, laying in bed, can you cuss on this show? What were helmets made out of before the introduction of plastic? Oh, we all wish we were more satisfied. Whose turn is it? I'm ready to end this nonsense. All righty. So, Josh, I understand we have uh, – who's this celebrity guest we have tonight? We, we, we've hung out with him before. He's a very nice guy. Taylor, correct? Yes, Taylor Russolino, former kicker of the uh, former you know XFL team in town, the St. Louis Battlehawks. Yeah, I will be. Uh, I will have him on for an exclusive look into uh, all the happenings that were the XFL. Right. Yeah. So we'll talk to him about everything that happened. Uh, yeah. After this, Joe, I want to thank Joe for coming on. Joe, a lot to offer, a lot to add. Very. Great deal of insight offered by Joe. Thank you. Guys, yeah. thanks for having me. Yeah, Appreciate look, it. Look forward to seeing you again. Absolutely. Anytime. Nice to All have righty. an expert on staff. 
Yes. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, we will be back uh, after this with an exclusive interview with me uh, and uh, Taylor Russolino right after this. Hey there, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of the show at night. Um, I know we've been a little all over the place lately. I just want to let you guys know that things have been a little crazy with trying to get things set up and organized, but uh, I promise you the rest of the episode is legitimate uh, stuff to pay attention to and watch. But in the meantime, as this is the sports episode, here is Byron with some, uh, you know, some games and things you can get outside and do to kind of, uh, you know, combat the fact that we're all inside and cramped up and a little bit bored. So take it away, Byron. Tell them what to do. Single player badminton. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the show is uh, based in St. Louis. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, we've, uh, we've recently lost our much beloved uh, Battle Hawks football team, but we were able to uh, get one of everybody's favorite players, uh, former Battle Hawks kicker, Taylor Russolino. Taylor, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. How is it going? I mean, it's going, man. Uh, it's, I gotta say, I don't know if you've been seeing all the stuff that's been, you know, around online and everything, but people are, uh, we're, they're really bumming around here. Yeah, I'll believe it. The worst thing about it, I think, is that uh, it all happened right before that big LA game where they were going to open the entire stadium. And right. uh, yeah, I would have loved to have seen how that was going to go down. Like you said, they were going to, you know, that dome was going to be rocking and, and the, the crowd number was going to be high. That was going to be one for the, one for the books for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think they just about had it sold out at the time, so just sucks we're not going to be able to experience all that and what it could have been. Right, right. Well, hey, you know, I'm sure uh, at least we have the memories to uh, to get us by. Right, right. There, there were sure a lot of good ones, put it that way. Well, first and foremost, how are you and, uh, you know, your family and everybody doing in the midst of all this? I know it's really weird, strange times, but, uh, you know, how, how's everything going over there? Yeah, we're, uh, I mean, we're doing well for the most part. Just uh, I'm out here in, in Huntington Beach. Um, my fiance, my brother, um, you know, we're doing well, though. You know, it's, you know, we're, uh, we're abiding by the, the rules and social distancing and, and kind of staying busy here at home and, you know, training wise, just staying, you know, staying ready and staying active and keeping, keeping everything, you know, up to par for hopefully when that NFL call comes. But but my family's doing well, you know, we're all getting through it one day at a time and, you know, remaining positive, you know, trying to find as much optimism as we can and, and hopefully looking forward to this thing coming to an end, hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think that's what we're all hoping for. And, uh, you know, I got, and I got to say, as, as great as uh, St. Louis is, as much as I love it, uh, California is not a bad fallback spot if you got to be uh, just yeah. stuck in one place. Yeah, it's not a bad spot to be quarantined. So, so I, I'm definitely thankful for that. We'll make the best out of it. Yeah, and you were saying, uh, I know, and I've seen, you know, online and stuff through your social media stuff. I see you've been training and, you know, keeping in shape and keeping things going, uh, you know, for the potential of a, you know, a call from some one of the uh, NFL teams. What's that, what's that process like with, you know, the way that, you know, you, I mean, you can't just go wherever. I mean, is it hard to kind of like find spots where there's the necessary, you know, stuff you need to be able to get into? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, you know, every, you know, all the local fields, high school and colleges, you know, they're all basically locked up. Um, so nothing's really accessible. So um, I've been resorting to a few, a few of the local grass parks that are around the area. And, you know, some of them have, you know, for instance, a light pole or something like that where I can use as a target and, and just go out there and work on the swing. And, um, but for the most part, just been, you know, as far as lifting and all that, been doing most of that at home. And, you know, like I said, just kind of making do with what I have and, and uh, you know, really just, really just doing the little things that can, you know, benefit me from when we do get back to, you know, say a training camp grind where it's a daily thing and, and, and it's, you know, it's taxing on the body. So I'm just, just making sure that I'm ready for, uh, for those moments and, you know, but like I said a couple times, just making use of what I have and, and using it the best. Yeah, it's got to be a, 
an interesting situation to try to continue training and, you know, stay loose and keep your, uh, you know, keep everything going as a kicker, because, you know, it's not like, you know, a, like, you know, receiver quarterback where you can just go out in your backyard with somebody, throw a ball around, you know, right. in terms of the actual, you know, skill portions of uh, training and stuff. So. Yeah, I should be good. I mean, I haven't, haven't ran into any trouble yet. So, so, so far so good. And it's just a few blocks away from my house. So I just make myself at home and, get the legs swinging and keep it loose. I know there was, you know, I mean, the fan reactions were big and there was a lot, the, you know, the whole process. I was just going to see what was the process going from, you know, the beginning of, you know, the XFL starting up and then them getting in contact with you and bringing you into the team and getting that all situated. I mean, I, I mean, I basically, so I had gotten a call maybe about a week before mini camp, you know, so that was mini camp. I think we started like December 4th. I remember uh, it was like thanks, either Thanksgiving Day or the day after. So, you know, about a week before I got the call and, and uh, you know, kind of like I have through most of my career, you know, without being on a team, you know, as a kicker, you, you kind of just have to remain ready, you know, 24-7, 365. So, so at that moment I was ready and then, you know, I went up there for mini camp. Um, we were up there for a few weeks and, you know, Obviously, as a whole new organization, as a whole new team, it was an, it was an interesting dynamic having, you know, say there was 50 or 60 of us in the locker room, you know, half the guys, you know, half the guys had the NFL experience and, you know, plenty of them had the NFL type money. And then you have another half of the guys who have, you know, are, are trying to get up to that level. So it, it was, it was, it, it wasn't just a group of 60 players, you know, all making millions of dollars per se, like, you know, similar to an NFL locker room. So, so it kind of humbled some people, but the locker room was amazing. I mean, it was a, it was an incredible group of guys. You know, we, we, we kind of all had one goal, you know, there was, there was no rookies. There was no vets, you know, we we're all on the same page. We we're all there for the same reasons, you know, no matter what we did in the past, how good, how bad, how big of a school, you know, how many years played in the NFL, we were all there. And we're all there to, um, you know, to make the best of the opportunity that Coach Hayes and the organization, you know, had given us. And, and you know, the coaches, the personnel, um, the strength staff, the video. I mean, every single person in that building had, uh, you know, had a great attitude about it and was just hungry. You know, hungry to succeed, hungry to, you know, to, to give St. Louis what they wanted. And, and I think we did a, you know, a pretty good job of it. And, 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 you know, and that's obviously what made it so unfortunate that, that, you know, these circumstances had to had to kind of rip that under us, you know, in a moment's notice, essentially. So, but I mean, it was a, it was an awesome, awesome team to be around. Every, every guy on that team is somebody I'll remember for forever. I mean, tons of friendships, tons of bonds and tons of good relationships that, you know, can hopefully flourish as life goes on. And, and that's kind of what it's all about. You know, when you walk into a locker room, just, just being surrounded by people with similar goals is, I mean, it makes everybody's job a little bit easier. What was it like in the the build up to that home opener and then getting to you know the stadium and the dome on that day and like I mean was it about what you expected was it more like how how was that whole thing it, it was I mean you know going on the road for the first couple of games you know having one one which was uh which was a great way to start the season um so coming home you know with a one and one record with all the with all the hype that we had been hearing you you know, ticket sales high, merchandise is selling, you know, just the fans were, were engaged. And, and that first home game couldn't have came any quicker. You know, the day we, uh, the day of the game, it was awesome. I just remember, you know, specifically getting off the highway right there by the dome. And, uh, you know, we had two buses, you know, the bus I was on, you know, nine out of 10 people have their headphones in, you know, as we exit, um, you know, the ramp right there, we all kind of, everybody kind of looked up for a second because, we started to see the tailgates, you know, the flags, the sea of blue, and, and kind of people were taking their headphones out and looking at the guy next to him, kind of like, "Wow, like this is this is unbelievable." You know, it it, it kind of looked like a a big SEC tailgate or a, you know a, a big you know say like a, a Saints Falcons game where you have people all outside the dome. Just you know, the tailgate was crazy for a new football team. You know, you could see the excitement and. And, and like I said, the amount of people, I mean, we all kind of peeked our heads left and right. And there was a, I mean, it was, everybody had a, the intensity level rose right there on the bus, you know, and, and we carried that into the game that day, which, you know, led that led us was a big part of leading us to that victory. And, 
the excitement from the city and the fans are going to show up. But if we saw it with our own eyes, I mean, to all of us, it was like, all right, this is the real deal. These people are excited. You know, let's go out there and, and give them what we have and, and, you know, get this W. I mean, it was, it was an incredible sight. Like I said, seeing the, the fans on the left, on the right side of the bus. And, and then when we did that walkthrough, just that, you know, that couple hundred yards of walking and giving about 500 high fives left and right and hearing the bands and, the cheers was I mean it's like we had been there for 10 years and we were coming off of a Super Bowl year or something it was it was amazing yeah I mean it's definitely St. Louis is one of those things where you know a lot of people if you're if you don't have a lot of experience with St. Louis a lot of people think it's they go oh it's a you know it's a it's a baseball town I mean I was down there that home opener and I was even kind of blown away with just the level of people and how serious they I mean you know I figured I'd see some people drinking beer and Maybe like right. it's not a little grill out in a parking lot, but I mean, they, it looked like, you know, when the Rams were here in their prime and people were, you know, showing up and right. packing the dome every game. So, yeah, it was very loud in there. Yeah. Having everybody on the field right there really, you know, enhanced that <laughs> the crowd noise and, and, the, and the level of, you know, cheers and all that. It was, it was amazing. And then another thing that, you know, some people watching this don't know, but, you know, we, have this uh this uh bit of a connection here because there was i i reached out to you and our former punter uh marquette king we got the uh the boom and the bang movement started where when you kicked uh we would get everybody all bang what i mean what was that uh from you guys' perspective what was that like down there on the field <laughs> It, it was cool. I mean, it, like you said, you know, it kind of, you know, for me, it kind of came about in that second game. And, and I was lucky enough to have three field goals in that game. So it, it's cool because if you watch the film of those kicks, you can hear it loud and clear. And it was funny because, I mean, even from the first warm up kick that I had, which was an hour before the game, like, you know, whether there's, you know, the, the few hundred fans that show up just to watch this warm up is always cool. And, and as I was warming up from 20 yards away, you know, and then back it up on each side of the field, I mean, every warm-up kick, bang, it's, it's like the fans are warming up as well, you know, just to kind of to kind of see how I would react. And it was, it was, it was cool. Marquette was like, yeah, you hear that, right? I'm like, oh, I hear it. It was like, it was, you know, it was exciting. And then, like I said, I was lucky enough to have three kicks in that game and lucky enough to make them. Um, but, 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 yeah, I mean, watching the film, it's pretty cool because you can, you can certainly hear it when that ball comes off my foot. <laughs> What was it like for you guys? Because it was kind of cool. Like, it seems like the fan base really did have this, like, this special connection to the special teams unit. Like, it seemed like you guys were some of the, the biggest guys on the team. To yeah, it was. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, for a fan base to, to fall in love with specialists like that certainly is rare, especially with, with not much under our belt. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, in my opinion, it, you know, it definitely starts with, you know, with number seven himself. I mean, coming from where his, his background is and, you know, his years in the NFL and, and his personality traits and, and his, his lively, you know, acts of happiness and just being on the field and his enthusiasm every time, you know, we're out there at practice or especially in the games. I mean, he was just able to get the attention. And, and, and then, it, you know, obviously it makes it a little better when we, when we go out there and we execute. You know, I mean, we weren't missing field goals, you know, yet. We weren't, you know, we weren't missing many punts. And, you know, we were we were having a great time, which um, which made it all better from a, a fan's perspective. You know, when the, when the players on the field are doing their job and, and scoring points and helping the team get the win, you know, the fans are always going to be behind you, um, which was which was amazing. But I don't know. It, it was definitely a unique experience, especially, you know, having the, the ability to, you know, to run around the stadium after a win and, and cheer on a crowd as a kicker and punter. That, that's pretty rare. I remember uh, it was a funny story because one of my buddies was the kicker for the New York team and he was looking for me in the middle of the field uh, post game. And he was like, that's not something you see every day, you know, like the, the kicker and punter running around holding flags and cheering up the crowd. So it was incredible to have such love coming from the fans and, and everybody. And, you know, that's something hopefully I can generate at the next level and, and also continue that success. Cause that certainly helps, you know, certainly helps the fans engagement of, you know, positive remarks towards me as a kicker and punter. Take me through the process between the postponement and then up until how you actually found out that the league just would be no more. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean, kind of like you said, I, I mean, you know, everybody kind of found out different ways. Um, you know, the day we were sent home, I mean, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. We'll be right back in a few. You know, there, there wasn't, unfortunately, there wasn't much of that type of talk. Um, you know, so we all went home and, you know, obviously, you know, kind of checking our phones, just staying in contact with each other, with some of the coaches and all that, just kind of seeing. But I mean, at that moment, nobody had answers. You know, nobody knew, um, you know, what the future had. Um, nobody knew a couple of weeks from now to all the way to the season of 2021. You know, everything was kind of unknown and uncertain. And then kind of like you had mentioned, you know, just scrolling through social media one day, I guess, once it broke through, um, you know, once the word got out, it kind of spread fast that, um, you know, that, you know, because at first they had mentioned, oh, well, maybe we'll play the playoffs. Um, and, and then I, that obviously went out the window. And then, you know, eventually, you know, following the lead of, of, of some other sports leagues, whether it was the NCAA or, you know, canceling spring sports and all that. I mean, the XFL, you know, we kind of saw it coming. And then it was kind of, you know, all right, well, you know, the league shutting down, you know, but, but then we'll kind of, you know, we'll stay, we'll get ready for 2021. You know, I remember talking to a few of the, uh, of the staff and the organization being like, you know, we basically just started our off season five weeks early, and, you know, so therefore that, you know, that's a long off season now, you know, given we only played five games and, you know, you have another seven or eight months until you get ready for that next one. And then, uh, and then obviously, you know, a few days ago when all the bigger news came out as far as the whole league shutting down and, and nothing coming, you know, nothing going forward as far as 2021 goes and then the whole bankruptcy thing, um, you know, within the league. And it was unfortunate. I mean, who knows what the future is? I mean, I've seen some news as, as there are some potential buyers for the league. Um, you know, that's a lot of weight to carry if anybody really takes on that. But you know, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I mean, it was unfortunate just get here and, you know, one thing at a time, kind of just seeing the down, you know, seeing the downward spiral and, and, and realizing that, you know, you know, the best, I mean, you know, we still have no idea what the future holds. I mean, St. Louis could very well have, you know, that Battle Hawks team right back in the town in a year or two, um, you know, but who knows? So, you know, as, as I kind of like to put it, you know, stay positive, remain, op you know, remain optimistic, um, you know, keep the optimism and, Kind of just see what happens. You know, let the chips fall and, you know, take it one day at a time. Yeah, and I know you're, you know, like you said, you were training, trying to get a call from the NFL this year. Do you have any kind of, do you have an inside scoop for us here? Has there been any contacts, any, uh, anybody reaching out? There, there has been. I, you know, I've, I've had some love coming my way. Um, I have, I have not, you know, nothing, nothing as far as, obviously, I have not signed anywhere yet. But, you know, you have the draft approaching in a week. Um, I've had a few teams reach out. I've had, you know, I have a few teams telling us, you know, you know, wait a few more days before the draft or a lot of people kind of right now we're thinking right when the draft is over um, that a lot more XFL guys will be picked up because, you know, there, there, there has been about 15 or 16 guys signed yeah. um, to have two NFL rosters. Um, but, you know, like I said, as, as they prepare for the draft, you know, this entirely new draft process that each organization is going through, um, it, you know, it seems like it's just kind of delaying some of the some of the other signings, whether you're a free agent coming from the XFL or off the street. So, you know, I can finally make that dream a reality and, and hopefully hopefully have opportunity, you know, with an NFL organization here soon. Um, there were so many moments, so many highlights from the season to go over. But I mean, where I mean, how does anything on the field rank and compare with the time that uh, you and uh, Marquette King and Tanner came over to uh, our house for a barbecue one night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was cool. Um, you know, well, that afternoon, you know, basically Mar Marquette was like, you know, hey, we're going to go over to a buddy's house. Um, you know, we're going to cook some food. You know, we'll stop at Whole Foods on the way, get some, get some good food. We'll go on over there, you know, maybe have a glass of wine or a beer or two. And, you know, like, who are they fans? Like, how did you come across these fans? Like, you know, but he was like, look, he's like, I'm a I'm not going to lead you all into anything, anything astray. And, you know, so we trusted him and, you know, it was cool. I mean, I think we were, I think it was like a 15, 20 minute drive from where we were going, you know, so we hopped in the Uber and, you know, we're, we're approaching, I guess your neighborhood. And, you know, so we're like, all right, you know, the area is pretty nice, you know, so far so good. And, you know, we pull up to the house and I mean, we were, I mean, Marquette, which house is it? Is that them? Like, like who, what, like who are we looking for and where are we looking for them at? You know, but, but I mean, from that moment till the moment we left, I mean, it was, it was awesome. I mean, we had, we had a phenomenal time hanging out with, you know, you and some of your buddies um, and the, you know, the hospitality that you guys provided for us. And it was great. I mean, because that, that's a rare thing to, you know, for, 
for for fans to you know to have the accessibility of of players like that especially in the middle of the season but you know living and being in St. Louis and it was new to all of us you know we were kind of there were there were times where we were kind of looking for things to do so I mean it was perfect we were very happy we got to come over and enjoyed some great food and again you know thank you for having us and it was awesome I mean we we, we left being like all right Marquette you know you didn't let us down at all that was fun you know we enjoyed it for sure I was kind of I had to be very selective with who I invited. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, bring anybody over the weird anybody out. And I think we did a pretty good job of that. <laughs> yeah, it was perfect. Everybody was cool. It was, it was a, it was a good crowd, good people, good times, good food. Well, thank you very much, Taylor. It was, uh, it was a blast having you on. It was an honor getting to uh, get a little insight as to what all, you know, transpired and is going on with you. And for sure, for sure. Well, I appreciate you having me. And uh, you know, y'all have a phenomenal rest of the day. Continue to stay safe, stay healthy. You know keep practicing the social distancing for now and you know we'll get through this you know we'll come out stronger and uh you know we'll, we'll be good in the long end so one day at a time and just keep doing the little things and and again thank you well everyone there it was uh our exclusive uh talk with taylor Rusolino, the former battle hawks kicker here in st louis a lot of insight a lot of uh you know inside knowledge and uh information that we didn't know Absolutely. About the you know i like i liked him before the interview and i like him more now very nice dude very nice guy give us some very uh, insightful answers and uh, i'm sure people will be talking about this uh everywhere at tomorrow around mm-hmm. the uh well, not the water cooler i guess anymore. very gracious of him to spend his time with us tonight very gracious absolutely yeah he uh you know it was very nice of him to uh get in touch with us so very fun show. We will be back next week. We have some surprises we'll be uh, trying to work on throughout the course of the weekend, and we'll see what we can bring to you next week. So, ladies and gentlemen, for everyone here, for my co-host Byron and our sports expert, Joe Valley, as we always say here on the show at night. <laughs> Hi.